Ah, what you doing, Ed? Pitching a tent? Nope, just fixing up a fallout shelter for my livestock. Well, how are you going to use the top holder? I plan to extend it out from the barn over this framework. I can get quite a few cattle under it, those I can't get into the barn anyway. How do you expect to feed them when there's fallout all over the place? I don't the first day or two. I'll just leave enough food and water where they can get at it. They'll get along all right. I sure hope you never have to use that top against fallout, I mean. Me too. But if this country's ever attacked, fallout will be my biggest problem. And I'm going to be prepared. Now, there's a wise farmer. And a practical one, too. He's not only prepared a shelter area for his family, but he's making sure his livestock will be protected as well. Remember, if there should be a nuclear attack on us, farm animals as well as human beings can be injured, even killed, by radioactive fallout. Be prepared. Learn how to protect your livestock wherever possible from radioactive fallout. Do it today. Stocking a two-week supply of food and water for your shelter area is a very important preparation for possible enemy attack. Making sure that such food and water supplies are safe from radioactive fallout is equally important. That's what this family is doing. Well, the food's stored in our shelter safe enough. Yes, because most of it is in a can, carton, package, or bottle. It would be safe even if it did get exposed to radioactive fallout. You couldn't eat or drink anything from them until you washed or wiped them off, of course. Could we drink water that was exposed, Dad, if we boiled it? No, Bobby. Exposed water requires filtration. But if we ran short, we could use the ice cube water from our refrigerator. Our canned fruits and vegetables are packed in liquid, so that would help. We've got to protect the food and water itself. Make sure it isn't exposed to fallout. The same thing is true of our eating and cooking utensils. So we could wash them if they were exposed. That's right, son, but we'd have to throw the wash water away outside the shelter. Wise family. And a safe one. Be prepared. Know how to protect your food and water from radioactive fallout. Should an enemy attack the United States, radioactive fallout would be a major threat, whether you live in a big town or small one. So know how to protect yourself against it. Like this family. Come on, honey, to the shelter. Will we be safe against radioactive fallout? Sure, I followed civil defense plans. Put three feet of earth over it. Hey, come on, Dad and Mom. I've got the Colonel Rad station tuned in on the battery radio. Sis is checking the food and water supply. Might have to last us two weeks, son. It will. Janie and I saw to that. Wise family. And a safe one. An underground shelter is your best defense against fallout. A basement refuge is good, too. Make one by placing sandbags, magazines, bedding, any dense material around and over a shelter area in your basement. The basement itself provides some protection. An ordinary house would probably cut the radiation in half if you stay on the first floor near the center of the house. So be prepared. Know how to protect yourself against radioactive fallout. Joe? Joe? Yes, dear? Joe, I smell something burning. Well, have you checked that roast you have in the oven lately? Joe, I'm serious. Joe, there's smoke pouring out of the kitchen. Hey, you're right. The wastebasket's on fire. What are you doing? Putting a cover over the wastebasket, smothering the fire. That's right, Joe. To make a fire, three things are necessary. Fuel to burn, heat to make it burn, and air to keep it burning. Take any one of these three away, and there can be no fire. In Joe's case, he took the air away so the fire couldn't burn. He could have cooled the fire by dousing it with water, no heat. Or he could have removed the fire itself, got it outside where it couldn't spread by using a shovel, broom, rake, or other tool. Be prepared. Know how to fight fires in your home. For your own protection, your local civil defense director urges you to learn now. Should the United States ever be attacked, here's how it might happen. The place? A radar post on our distant early warning line. Frank, come here quick. I got some bogies. You said it, a whole flock of them. And all headed south. Alert NORAD. At North American Air Defense Headquarters, the alert is received and jet interceptors rise to defend us. Meanwhile, civil defense attack warning officers stationed there warn the nation. A simultaneous alert goes to almost 300 warning points across the country. It's then passed to state and local governments. Who sound public warning devices to alert the people. The attack alert sounds like this. A steady blast of three to five minutes. It means take action as directed by your local authorities. The take cover signal sounds like this. 
A wavering tone for three minutes. It means take cover. Be prepared. Remember your public warning signals and know what they mean. Look at that lightning. Ooh, close the door, Jim. There's a draft. Oh, what lousy weather. Oh, darn, there go the lights. And the refrigerator. What if our power really failed? I mean an attack on our country. No gas or electricity, no refrigerator, no freezer. What would we do? The first thing to remember is this. Keep your refrigerator and freezer closed as much as possible. If gas or electric service isn't restored within 12 hours, eat or cook the most perishable items in your refrigerator before they spoil. If you can't cook them, throw them out before they contaminate other foods. With freezers, check your service book. It will tell you how long you can keep food without power. Meat and other frozen foods can be preserved by cooking them soon after they have thawed. What you can't eat or cook immediately must be thrown away. Be prepared. Your local civil defense director urges you to learn what to do when public utilities fail. Home shelters can protect you from radioactive fallout. Are you prepared? Hey, Joe, you're causing a small riot in the neighborhood. What's going on over here? Well, finally got smart, huh? Right, this shelter's going to be finished, even if... Ooh, even if I lose a couple of fingers doing it. Don't let that enthusiasm carry you too far, Joe. But getting that home shelter completed is mighty important to you and your family. Even if you live far from a target area, there's still a chance you may be subjected to radioactive fallout. Tests have shown that the best protection against fallout is an underground shelter covered with at least three feet of earth. A basement shelter will offer good protection if you close off all windows, exterior entrances, and bank exposed walls. In homes without basements, first floor areas with the least exterior exposure, such as bathroom, utility room, or hallways, should be selected. Remember, a strong defense begins with a prepared family and ends with a protected nation. Be prepared. Those shelter plans could be your blueprint for survival. Survival in the nuclear age is your responsibility. Are you prepared? Okay, let's get this family meeting wound up and I'll treat all of you to a movie. Now, suppose I run down this list of family responsibilities during a disaster once more and make sure we all know just what to do. Now, let's see. It's Mother's job to stock the food and water supply in the shelter and keep it rotated. Junior, you check the battery-operated radio and take care of storing extra batteries. Susie, you keep the first aid kit fully supplied. Keeping the car in tip-top shape in case of evacuation will be my job. To protect your home and family, everyone must make a contribution. In the event of enemy attack or a sudden natural disaster, the speed with which you can swing into action may mean the difference between survival and collapse. But to be efficient, action must be organized. Assign a specific home preparedness job to each member of the family. Remember, a strong defense begins with a prepared family and ends with a protected nation. Start your family on a home preparedness program today. First aid training may someday mean the difference between life and death. Are you prepared? Mmm, something smells mighty good. Dinner about ready? Almost. Oh, Jim, would you get that big salad bowl for me? It's up on the top shelf, way back in the corner. Sure, just a second, <laughs> okay. honey. Boy, it's really way back here in the corner. Oh, oh. Jim! Jim! Are you all right? I think so. Except my arm. Looks like a bad cut, Jim. Lie still. I'll get some towels and try to stop the bleeding. Thank heavens for my first aid training. During a national emergency or even a natural disaster, medically trained personnel might not be able to reach you. That's why it's important that at least one member of every family have first aid training. Even in your daily living, a knowledge of first aid will prove helpful, and during a national emergency, it will be invaluable. Remember, a strong defense begins with a prepared family and ends with a protected nation. Start your first aid course today for survival tomorrow. Survival in the nuclear age is your responsibility. Are you prepared? Tommy! Tommy, help me carry in these groceries. Oh, gosh, Mom, you're going to have a party? Man, look at all that food. Hands off, young man. That's our two-week emergency food supply, and it's going right into the shelter. For two weeks following an enemy attack, you may have to survive without outside help. 
you will be forced to depend on the supplies you have on hand. When buying for your emergency supply, choose foods that will provide a well-balanced diet. Be sure to include mostly canned and dried foods that can be eaten without cooking. Store at least seven gallons of water per person. Change the water every six weeks and rotate the food supply at least twice a year. Remember, a strong defense begins with a prepared family and ends with a protected nation. Be prepared. Store your emergency food and water supply in your home shelter today. Information could be your lifeline to survival during enemy attack. Are you prepared? Four whole days. How much longer can it rain like this? Oh, Bill, is there any news? I don't know. The road's washed out. I couldn't get to town. Uh, phone working yet? No, neither is the radio. If only we knew whether the dam's going to hold. Hey, how about that battery-operated radio of mine in the den? I'll bet that's still working. Radio has always been a source of quick information during a disaster. However, in case of attack, radio's beams could help guide enemy planes to their target. That's the reason Conelrad, the emergency system of broadcasting, was devised. When you hear the alert signal, tune to these Conelrad frequencies, 640 and 1240, on your regular radio. During a national emergency, all power lines may be cut off. To make sure you receive the necessary information and instructions, keep a battery-operated radio in your family shelter. For survival information, know these frequencies, 640 and 1240, on your standard radio. Survival in the nuclear age is a personal responsibility. Are you prepared? <laughs> Mommy! Mommy! Mommy, I fell down and cut my arm. Look! Now, Johnny, you sit right here. I'll get the first aid kit and fix your arm. Lucky for us, I listened to some good advice and packed all the first aid items in one box. It comes in handy for emergencies like this. Right you are, Mother. In the day-to-day -day emergencies or great national disasters, preparedness pays off. Take the first step today. Assemble all the necessary medicines, bandages, a few extra towels, baking soda, safety pins, and razor blades. Wrap them in a moisture-proof covering and place in an easily carried box. It's a good idea to store your first aid kit in the home shelter, so no matter what happens, from Johnny's cut to a nuclear attack, you and your family will be ready. Remember, a strong defense begins with a prepared family and ends with a protected nation. Be prepared. Assemble your emergency first aid kit today. Modern warfare is no respecter of people or places. Today, farms are right on the front line with the cities. Many of the same emergency items that will help take care of your family will also keep your farm producing. Stored fuels for farm equipment, emergency power, spare parts for farm machinery. Arrange for extra storage space for grains, eggs, dairy products, and other perishables. Everything you can produce will be needed. The nation's survival under attack will depend on how well you prepare now. You can protect yourself from radioactive fallout after an enemy attack. Our tests have shown that an underground shelter covered by three feet of earth offers the best protection. A basement shelter could be made safe by closing off windows, exterior entrances, and banking exposed walls. In homes without basements, first floor areas with the least exposure, such as bathroom, utility room, or hallway, should be selected. Be prepared. Start building your home shelter today. When buying your emergency food and water supply, choose foods that provide a well-balanced diet. For instance, canned soups, fruits, vegetables, fruit juices, packaged cereals, and dried foods are excellent for storing. Raisins and chocolate are good energy-building foods and take up little storage space. Avoid storing salty foods because they will only add to the problem of drinking water. Remember, in case of attack, your emergency food and water supply may have to last your family two weeks. Home shelters are your best protection from radioactive fallout. A basement shelter will offer good protection, but an underground shelter three feet below ground will give almost complete protection. It's your responsibility to decide which is the safest area in your home, then determine what needs to be done to give it the best possible protection. 
If you want to build a basement shelter with concrete or sandbag walls and ceiling, plans are available. Remember, the moderate cost of constructing a shelter is low-cost insurance for you. Radio has always been a source of quick, accurate information during a disaster. When you hear the alert signal, tune to these Conelrad frequencies, 640 and 1240, on your regular radio. During a national emergency, all power lines may be temporarily cut off. To make sure you receive the necessary survival information, keep a battery-operated radio in your family shelter. For accurate information and instructions during enemy attack, it's 640 and 1240 on your standard radio. When the family is packing up to go on a vacation or maybe on an all-day trip to the beach, everyone's pretty busy. Dad is sure the car is in good condition, Mom sees to it that food and extra clothing is packed, and of course we can always count on the kids to bring special equipment, everything from a tennis racket to a portable radio. The same thing is true in preparing for possible enemy attack. Everyone should have a job to do and know when to do it. Be sure that everyone in your family is assigned a job to do in case of enemy attack. The threat of fire in our homes is always with us. It's a good idea to know how to deal with it. For fire to burn, three things are necessary. Fuel, heat, and air. Take any one away and no flames. Most small fires can be put out by cooling, dousing them with water, or by smothering, taking the air away. Another method is to get the blaze outside. Take the fuel away by using a broom or other tool. So remember, a fire needs heat, fuel, and air. Take any one away and no fire. Everyone in the United States should know his community's public action signals and what they mean. There are two signals. The alert signal is a steady blast of three to five minutes. It means attack is probable. Take action as directed by your local authorities. Tune your radio to the Conrad frequency of 640 or 1240 for official instructions and information. The take cover signal is a wavering tone or short blast for three minutes. It means attack is imminent. Take cover in the best available shelter. Be prepared. Know these signals and what they mean. Power failure, doing without gas or electric service, is something we've all experienced at one time or another. But in time of disaster, due to natural causes or enemy attack, we might have to do without such service for a long time. With refrigerated foods, this can be serious. If power is out for more than 12 hours, eat or cook the most perishable items in your refrigerator before they spoil. If you can't cook them, throw them out. Persons who own freezers should consult their service books. Remember, when power fails, keep your refrigerators and freezers closed. No one knows when disaster might strike. It could come in the form of hurricane, flood, blizzard, or fire, or by enemy attack. So it's wise to be prepared for any emergency. It's wise to take a Red Cross first aid or home nursing course. At least one member of each family should know how to take care of an injured person. Remember, in time of disaster, doctors, nurses, and other medical personnel will be difficult, if not impossible, to find. So take a Red Cross first aid or home nursing course now. Your automobile may save your life during a national emergency. It can move you out of the target area, provide shelter, communications, and carry supplies. Keep your car in good shape at all times. There is a defense against radioactive fallout. During enemy attack, get to a shelter immediately. Stay there until local officials advise you it's safe to leave. Be prepared. Every family should have a home shelter area. Every family should stock that shelter area with a two-week supply of food and water. Prepare now to survive disaster. In case of enemy attack on our country, these two numbers, 640 and 1240, may save your life. They are your Conrad frequencies. Remember, 640 and 1240. There are two air raid warning signals. A steady blast of three to five minutes means attack is probable. A wavering tone or series of short blasts means take cover. During a national emergency, you may have to be your own fireman. 
Take the first step now. Remove all fire hazards in your home. Eliminate clutter. Store flammables in a safe place. Government officials suggest that every family store a two-week emergency food and water supply in case of attack. Choose canned or dried foods that can be eaten without cooking. In time of disaster, natural or nuclear, medical aid may not be available. That's why one member of each family should take a Red Cross first aid or home nursing course now. A wise farmer knows that he must get his livestock under cover to protect them from radioactive fallout. An attack may never come, but it's wise to prepare now. Should public utilities fail in time of disaster, refrigerated foods must be either cooked or eaten before they spoil. If this can't be done, 